Hi guys, John the Quant here. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video and I'm sorry about that. I was traveling for a bit and then since I've been back, I've just been inundated with interviews and technical challenges and math tests and things like that. But where we left off, we were on our way to driving the Black-Scholes formula and we're almost there. Now, one of the assumptions of Black-Scholes is that the underlying asset price follows a log normal random walk. And what that means is the change in asset price might not be normally distributed, but the difference in the logarithms of asset prices is normally distributed. And we'll talk in just a minute about why we might want that assumption. So this kind of log normal random walk process is also called geometric Brownian motion. And before we get into Black-Scholes, we're really going to want to be able to work with this kind of stochastic process. And we're going to want to be able to solve this differential equation using stochastic integration. So we're going to need Ito's lemma. And if you haven't already watched the video on that, I'm going to put a pop up in this general area. And I highly recommend that you go watch that and then you come back to this. Otherwise, we're only going to be using concepts that we've already covered, so this video ought to be pretty short and pretty easy to follow. Let's head over to the iPad and get started. All right, we're over on the iPad, and again, we're talking about a log normal random walk, and what that means, it's, let's say, our asset price, we're going to call that S of T, okay? This is the asset price at time T. So... A log normal random walk means the asset price at time t2 minus the asset price of time t1. That is the change in asset price is not normally distributed. But the change in the natural log of those two is normally distributed. Now why might we want this? Let's talk about asset prices real quick. Prices can theoretically keep going up forever. We've already seen, say, Berkshire Hathaway having stock prices in well into six figures. But what's the lowest number that you would be willing to pay for something? Now for any rational person, I suppose, uh, that would be zero. You're willing to take something for free if it's valueless, but you're not willing to pay a negative amount. A price can never go negative. You're willing to take zero dollars for a valueless, valueless thing, giving it away for free, but you're not willing to pay somebody to take it away. So since asset prices can't be negative, having a normally distributed um, difference in prices doesn't make a lot of sense because a normal distribution... is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. So if we had normally distributed change in asset prices, then we could theoretically get negative asset prices. Okay, I'm going to write that down. If the change in asset prices is normally distributed, we could get negative asset prices and we don't want that so as a way to take um, the domain of the asset prices and change it into something that we can model with a normal distribution we'll take the natural log of the asset prices okay the natural log of the asset prices is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, the natural log goes up as the price goes up, so that reaches eventually infinity. But as the price goes to zero, the natural log of that price approaches negative infinity. So this we can model with a normal distribution without having negative asset prices. And that's why the assumption that the asset price 
follows a log normal random walk is very important to the Black Scholes model and is actually pretty common among all kinds of you know pricing models in general. So now that we've got a geometric Brownian motion, okay, which follows a random uh, log normal round bleh, round <laughs> log normal, there we go, random walk. That has stochastic differential equation representation. That looks like this. It looks like ds is equal to mu s dt plus whoop, plus sigma s db. Or if we can be more explicit, this here is the natural log of the change or the change in natural logs here. is equal to mu times s, which is a function of time, dt plus sigma s, again, that's a function of time, db, which is also a function of time. Or to be even more explicit, I'm just going to rewrite this so we can see that it works. The asset price, the difference in natural log of asset prices is the same as the natural log of the ratio of asset prices. Okay, it's just a rule of logarithms that hopefully you remember from like college algebra. And that's equal to the integral from 0 to t of mu big S of little s d little s plus the integral from 0 to t of sigma big S of little s db of little s. Okay, we're just writing the same thing more explicitly here. These are all exactly the same. All mean the same thing. So in this, we have a function f of s of t and t, which is the natural log of s of t. Okay, this here. And by Ito's lemma, By Ito's lemma, df is equal to the derivative of f with respect to s, ds, plus 1 half b, which is a function of s of t and t, squared times the second derivative of f with respect to s, dt. Hopefully you remember that from the Ito's lemma video. So taking our f, which is the natural log of s, okay? That means the derivative of f with respect to s is 1 over s, and the second derivative with respect to s is negative 1 over s squared. Now this b right here, that was just sigma s of t. So plugging in what we have now, we've got df is equal to 1 over s, m ds plus one half sigma squared s of t squared the second derivative is negative one over s squared dt so you can see some stuff is going to cancel out here we've got s squared and a s squared on the bottom df is equal to one over s ds plus one half whoop let's go ahead and move that negative out to the front, minus one-half sigma squared dt. Now this part, this ds, we know what that ds is because we have a log normal random walk there. So we can take that and just plug that in down here for ds. So we've got now df equals 1 over s mu s dt plus sigma s db plus sigma squared over 2 dt. Let's go ahead and move this forward. So we end up with mu dt plus sigma db minus sigma squared over 2 dt. Rearrange that to get all of the dt's 
together. That's mu minus sigma squared over 2 dt plus sigma db. All right, hopefully you guys feel pretty good right now. This we're going to change into f of t minus f of 0. And we're just writing everything out very explicitly right now. ds plus the integral from 0 to t of sigma db of s. What was f? f was equal to the natural log of s of t, right? So if we're just plugging in t here, then we'll get the natural log of s. I'm just writing this as a subscript to make it a little easier. Minus the natural log of s naught is equal to, this would be mu minus sigma squared over 2. Well, Let's do s evaluated from 0 to t plus sigma b of t minus b of 0. From those integrations. So this one we can rewrite as the natural log of s sub t over s naught is equal to mu minus sigma squared over 2. This is going to just become a t. Plus, I'm going to leave this written as is b of t minus b naught. Now, from this point, remember this is... Oh my god, I can't remember the word. It's not random. <laughs> Whatever the word is, it starts with a d. It's not random. And this one is random. Deterministic, that's the word. Deterministic. And that one is random over there. But at this point, we've got a natural log on one side, and we're trying to solve for s of t. So what we can do is do e to the power on both sides. Uh, exponentiate, I guess. s of t over s naught equals e to the mu minus sigma squared over 2t plus sigma b of t minus b naught. Over there, we want to solve for s of t. So there we go, s of t equals s naught e to the mu minus sigma squared over 2t plus sigma b of t minus b of 0. There we go. There's our solution. That was very easy, wasn't it? We didn't... Uh, all we needed to use was Ito's lemma and a little bit of integration, a little bit of algebra, and we're there. So there it was. Uh, we just solved that stochastic differential equation. It was pretty easy. It didn't take very long. And now that we can work with this geometric, geometric Brownian motion, um, we've got everything we need to drive Black-Scholes. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, I'm going to link to it so you can head straight from this video into that one. Other than that, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, were you guys ever confused? Did I do a good job explaining? Did I mess up badly somewhere? Let me know in the comments. If you learned something, try and like that video. If you want to keep learning stuff, go ahead and subscribe. Um, we're going to get a lot of new content coming out in pretty rapid succession here in the next couple of weeks. So I'll see you guys soon.